Guys, do you know what ADS is? Well, ADS stands for Alternate Data Stream and it is a feature specific to NTFS file system. Any file has at least one stream, the default one, but is not limited to it. You, create, you can create a second or a third one and add data there, data which normally is not visible. You can think of the backpack with the main pocket. This is the default stream. You put a towel inside, somebody opens the backpack, sees the towel. But you create a hidden pocket where you put a sandwich. If somebody opens the backpack, now he will still see only the towel, but not the sandwich, although it is there. Now let's see how this works. First I'm going to create a normal file with some text inside. So let's go. Okay. Now let's list the files. And we see here the size is 13. And the whole size of the files 784 bytes. If we check the MD5 hash for this. Okay, we got the hash here. Now we are going to add uh, some data in an alternate data stream. So, say hidden text in clean.txt, and we're going to add a colon for the alternate stream, and let's say hidden.txt. Okay, we list the files again. We see that the size for clean txt didn't change and neither this one. And if we check again the MP5 hash, we see that this one from the beginning and this one from here are the same. So the hash didn't change either. To see the content of the file, normally we use type command and clean.txt. Okay, see normal text. But if we try to do the same thing for the ADS, it doesn't work. We can still see the content using the more command. .txt, .txt. And now we see the content here, the one that was supposed to be hidden. Now we are going to create the backdoor by abusing ADS. For this demo we have to make the following assumption. We already have an uh, admin shell on a victim's machine. We have already deactivated virus and threat protection and we already uploaded our payload evil.exe on victim's machine. In C Windows, I made a copy of calculator app and I will use that as a host app. And I also have uh, evil.exe in the same location. Let's check. Okay. And we see those two files here. Now I'm going to copy the content of evil.exe in an alternate data stream for calctest.exe. So evil.exe and put it in calctest.exe and I'm going to name it evil.exe. Okay. Now if we're listing the content. We see the two streams, the standard stream, calctest.exe, and the one with evil.exe stream. Now we are going to create a symlink and name it, I don't know, backdoor.exe. So let's create a link backdoor.exe and it must point to calctest.exe and evil.exe stream. Okay, we have created it. After having created the same link, we are going to delete the evil.exe file. So, okay. Next, we are going to create a service and we will set it to run automatically at um, login. So, using SC, we are going to create a service and let's name it backdoor and for start. Set it to auto or error. We are going to set to ignore. And for bin path, we are going to use C Windows and 
calctest.txt. Our symlink to calctest.txt with evil.txt stream. Okay, the service has been created. Let's check the service and see its status. So, let's query. Okay. and we see that the service is stopped. I will exit the shell and start the netcat listener on port 4444. Okay. Okay. The service I just created executes a reverse shell on a victim's machine. Since the service runs automatically at logon, I will restart victim's machine. Now let's check the services and see if our service is running. We have to go to the R because it named it to Chile's backdoor. We we have it here and it sees that it's starting. Now let's get back to the attacker's machine and see if we got a reverse shell. We are back at the attacker's machine and we see that we have a reversal. If we run the command who am I, we see that we are logged in as system user. Guys, we saw how we can abuse ADSs for malicious purposes. But how can we detect them? Well, there are a couple of methods. First, we can use cmd and dir command with slash r um, option. If we use dir without it, we see here clean.txt standard.txt, but no other ADSs. If we add slash r option, we see here now the hidden uh, txt ADS and alter.txt ADS. We can also use streams, uh, streams tool from sysinternal suit for this. Let's see. Sysinternal suit streams. And let's check all txt files. Okay, let's close this. We see here for clean.txt it found hidden.txt ADS and for standard.txt it found alter.txt ADS. We can also use partial for this with the get item command. Let's see. Get item. And for path, I'm going to put users vector desktop and all.txt files. And for stream, I'm going to put star because I want to find all of them. Okay. Uh, we saw that it found the default stream for standard.txt and alter.txt ADS for uh, standard.txt file. But let's format it uh, a little bit. And select object file name stream length and for net table. Okay, now we see them both files, each one with the default stream and the alternate data stream. Hidden.txt for clean.txt and alter.txt for standard.txt. Well, what do we do if we want to remove a stream but we do not want to remove the original file? Well, we can do that. Uh, in partial, let's use command remove item. I'm going to put again path c users victim desktop and choose clean.txt file and for stream parameter I'm going to use start because I want to delete all the streams okay and now if we run again the previous command we can see that for clean.txt we only have the default stream hidden.txt stream disappeared okay we can do the same thing with a stream tool from sysinternal suit and we're going to alter a bit the command we are going to add dash d parameter to delete and instead of all txt files I'm going to choose only standard.txt. Run the command, we see here the output deleted alter.txt stream and if we run again the previous command to detect the uh, alternate data streams we see that, that there are no other uh, uh, ADSs for the, our txt files. Well guys, that was all for today. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Bye bye!